um, uh, like in uh, uh, the, in the first scenario, I, mm -hmm. I'm just going in the first scenario. Um, even with the uh, in the static class, no, no, no. In the normal class, I don't know what is it? Let me just give me one second. Static method. One second. Even in the static method, mm. we will be calling with the directly that variable name, like uh, in the methods. The method name or variable name? Uh, for example, in the same class, the first scenario, in the mm. same class, mm. static member mm. is there. Mm. In the same class, mm. there is an another method, static mm. method. We mm. can call directly with the method name or variable name. Right. Right. But fortunately, I just did a mistake stating uh, with the uh, class name dot variable name. Like in the second scenario, how we will be calling like in the other packages, in the same package in other classes. But still it is yeah. working. Yeah, it will work because so uh, like it will refer as a class name. Okay. So always static member belongs to a class. Okay. So you can call uh, with the class name also. If there is a, generally we will follow that process when there uh -huh. is a conflict. Conflict, okay. So if no conflict, you don't need, directly you can call. Even though if we do not explicitly hmm. mention the class name there, by hmm. default you can take the class name. No, ah, it will correct. take. Yeah. Okay. So implicitly it will take. Okay, Ramesh, got it. Yeah. Ramesh, all static. Ramesh, and, uh, mm -hmm. I did not understand the question now. Can, can you please no. just read it? So in the same class, so Rayeshwari called the static members with the class name. Generally, we need to use class name for uh, static variables in another classes, right? Yeah, but exactly. Right. In the same class. Okay, okay. That is also possible. Because okay. any uh -huh. static belongs to class only. Uh -huh. okay. We can call. No issues in that. Okay. okay. So today's topic is a very important. Uh, so we have finished the instance methods. Now I want to show you how to call non-static members of one class in another class. So let's go and see in the same package. Okay, in the same package where your instance members are there. On the same package, I'm creating another class. Call instance members. Another class, same package. Okay. So now, see, always first point you need to remember if you are calling a non static stuff you need to create an object for the class. So follow the syntaxes. Create an object for the class. Which class? This class or this class? Which class members you are calling? That class you have to create object. Remember that point. <laughs> Not for the current class. Again, I am writing syntax so that you should not forget this. This is a local variable syntax, okay? That means this object reference you can use in this method only. Nowhere else. So,
no finally i created object okay if you want to know what is the value in this object reference how do you find it out good question right i told you, okay the object address will store there in the reference variable but i didn't tell you how to get that object address you want to know okay what value is there in that reference variable so let's go and get that uh, value also which object reference variable value by hash code method by hash code method of object class okay so this hash code method is a return type method return type non static method from object class so where this method is available in the yeah. object class but what is the return type of this method integer so what is the return type of this method integer so which class this method is available object class so object is the predefined class which is available in java.lang package and i want to know what value is stored what is the memory address of this one this object memory address what is that so if you want to know you just call like this int amd obj memory address equal to the object reference dot hash code see that hash code method is returning integer type so that is how you can get so if you want you can print it but i'm i'm telling this extra this is not uh, but i'm going to come after this very very important uh, you know point so how these memories are allocated in stack and uh, heap memory i'll show you in the diagrammatical and uh, detailedly okay so please pay attention for that Ramesh, one small question. So, yeah. uh, in real time, also, do we get these kind of scenarios and uh, getting the value of that reference variable? Or... Sorry, can you come again? No. In real time, also, do we do we get that scenario of getting a value of reference variable? Yeah, you might need because if you created two objects, you want to compare. First, you should know, right? What is the value in this? In this, right? If you know only is a string, uh, integer, uh, what? I'm telling heap address. What is that heap address? Let's see that. See this integer number. So it's going to give an integer number. Okay, so that is the number. You, so in the heap, it allocates for this ad object. Okay, so now let's go to formulas. How can you call this class non static members in another class? So Second scenario. So first question. First variables. How can you access one class non-static variable in another class? So that's what the question. And what is the answer? Object reference dot non-static variable. So let's go. And what is object reference? IMD OBZ dot See, when you put a dot automatically, the members of that object, it will show. So what are the members that will be shown to you? 
So D, F, I, these are the non-static variables. That non-static variables will go and store in the so heap memory. So I'm going to get D value minus IMD OBJ dot I value. So that I can assign to double result. So this is how you can call non-static variables in another class from other classes. Okay. Okay, that is done. Let's execute this. So minus 4.4. .4. Oh, it's less than that. It's okay. But double, double value. Or otherwise I will do multiply by five. So that I don't want to make a negative values. I'll make some positive value by all these logics how you built is it's all depends on you okay next one how can you call non-static void method in another class of same package both classes are in same package and uh, here object reference is so imdb AMD OBJ dot. So now I need to call this method. Okay. This one. But how can I call this? But this as a private will be allowed. It's not showing. You can see. No, private, you cannot see it within the class only. It is so That is not accessible. Yeah. Change it to? Yeah. So now, dot. Pardon. See that? So all the car demo code is executed. Next. How can we call wide parameterized methods? So swap. If you want, you can give that memory address, whatever you want, but uh, 25, 90. So you had X of 25, Y 90, and after swapping, it becomes X 90, Y 25. Good. So our logic is without writing again in this class, I'm calling other class method. That's a reusability of the methods. You don't need to write. If same logic you want, you just call the methods. So return type methods, how to call. So already I have shown you return type methods, how to call in the hash code method also one return type non-static method. With object reference, I call that method hash code method. So now data type. Uh, integer so rand val equal to so imdb dot imdob say dot get random integer so I forget to ask you did you do this uh, 
program i haven't seen nobody send to me math uh, different that one only. math programs and also i told you create a parametrized method right we created max min number per cube but i give a create a parameterized method of random integer that also i have given i think you are forgetting you have to make a load of okay now so the next one is how to call print statement inside the return type method So system out and so is even False because 25 is not even. That's why false. So that's all about methods, how to call. And uh, let's see the last scenario. Scenario three. So always you remember you are crossing the package. You're going to call in another package. Right? You're going to call another package. One package class methods if you are calling in another package what is the procedure what is the first step you need to do import import you should not forget any of these things another package class call non static members in another package class, one package class non-static members, you are calling in another package. So first create a object for the class, okay? Create object for the class. So the class name is uh, instance member demo using new keyword for you again i am writing the same thing at least if you write multiple times so so that you won't forget the object syntax why do you need to create object first of all do you know that why do you need to create object Hmm? We need to store that, uh, I mean, value in some uh, variable which is reusable. No. So you may Where do you want to create to call a non static uh, um, in order to uh, call a uh, class uh, method from a different class, we need an object reference. Yeah, Salman Raja given yeah, correct yeah. answer. Uh, since so it, is to, a, it is not a static uh, method, so you cannot to access. Call any non static yeah. members. Yes, sir. Yeah. You need object. to create an object. Without object, you cannot call mm. non-static methods, non-static okay. variables. That is the reason you are creating object. You should know the purpose and eh? that's a very important, right? Without knowing the purpose, you are moving on. Very bad. Hmm?
So, see that it is throwing error. Why? What is the error? Instance demo cannot be resolved to a type. Hmm. What is the mistake you so we are doing here? Uh, mistake or it is correct only? Uh, new object. Hmm? 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 So you have to do it. Syntax is correct. I already oh. told again. This is another very, very useful point you need to remember. Mm -hmm. We are calling one package class in another package. The first step is import. Import package name dot class name. So these uh, syntaxes, you should not forget these points. So by heart them or revise them multiple times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, first point. How can you call non-static variable? So directly, once you import, that's the same object reference dot. See, only one is visible, that is F. Why F only visible? Because F is having a public. So it has a public. That is the reason. So you are able to see that. See F value will get here. So we didn't declare here, but we are accessing from another class. That's the reusability. Okay. How to call void method? Again, same. Object reference dot. Method name. Pair demo. How to call parameterized method? So both wide methods I have called. Now, how to call return type methods? So data type, I'll call Boolean. So is even equal to imdb is a dot is even not visible why why it's not visible why it's not visible hmm? what is the read that Oh, to Accessibility public. Okay. is not available. Limit, I guess. So you have to Visibility. give permission. Hmm. Visibility is not there for that. Public it is. So it's a default. It's a default. Default is per that package only. But we are yeah, trying okay. to access in another package. See hmm. now error is gone. So error gone, right? Yeah. True, it's even. 
Let's call uh, return type method in the print statement. So random integer value is. Can we access? I don't think so. Get random. It's not there. Why? Why it's not there? Because this is a protected. Protected when you can access in another packages. Only when you when hear it. Extends. When you do hear it. So I'm going to change it to public. So get random. <laughs> So that's the 95. Okay, that's all about how to call different methods. Okay, now what is happening here? What is happening here? Right? This is the main method, main method below your call. So what is happening here? So let's understand this concept. So you need to understand the stack and the heap, okay? Stack and heap, you need to understand. So what is a stack and what is a heap area? So what data will store in the stack? What data will store in the heap? So basically, a stack memory is used to execute a current threads. So execution of any local data. Uh, to store that, you will use that. And uh, mainly runtime data will be stored in the heap. Runtime data will be stored in the heap. So basically, when you access the stack, it will be last in first out order. The order is last in first out order. So whenever a, a new method is called, a new frame is created in the stack. A new block it means a new stack will be created on top of one of the other. So it basically all temporary data, method calls, local variable data that will store in the stack memory. So whereas in uh, you no, know, uh, once the method execution is over, and that data won't be available for you, it will be cleaned from the stack memory. That's why one method, local variable data, you cannot call in another method in the same class also. The reason is behind this. This is the reason. So you need to understand this concept, very, very important. Why you cannot access local variable in another method? The reason is the local variable data will store in the stack memory. Once that method execution is over, that the stack frame completely destroys. It won't be available at all. So that will be the frame will be flushed out. The flow goes back to main method again. So that's the the so stack memory is. So the stack memory it grows and shrinks as new methods are called and written. Variables inside the stack exist only as long as the method that created them is running. Otherwise, once the method execution is over, it will be destroyed. Under the memory allocation, it will happen automatically and deallocate automatically. When the method execution is over, and deallocate the memory. When method start execution, that time, the local variable data will store in the stack memory. In, the, in that particular frame, every method has one frame. That frame inside this local data will go and store. So if the stack memory is full, you will get a stack overflow error. Access to this memory is fast compared to heap memory. So this memory is a thread safe. Each thread operates in its own stack. So that's the stack and heap. Heap basically allocates a dynamic memory. So it is you no know, allocates the data, a runtime data, so for the objects. 
So when you create object, automatically the memory will be created in the heap memory. So let's let's see this all this uh, no. Uh, so it is accessed via complex memory management techniques like you have anger generation, old and tenured generation, permanent generation, like a lot of, you know, uh, so parts will be there in the heap memory. If heap is full, you will get an out of memory error. Then how can we increase? There are uh, XMS and XMS, XMX. So these are the parameters you can use to increase the memory, heap memory size. So that uh, then your application also speed up. So that's the one. Let's see, understand this program, just simple program I have given. Example class, there is a main method. In the main method, I created an object. So new example. And I am calling example dot function one I called. Okay. Function one is a parameter. Okay. That is the. So then function two also there, function three also there. Okay. Now, so how it will store? Let's go and see this uh, in this diagram. See all this, each function, this is the first main method stack will be created. And the example reference variable will come and store in the stack memory. Like in our program, this IMDOBJ will store in the stack memory and this will store in the heap memory. Here. So the object will store in the heap memory and the local variable data will store in the stack memory. So, and each method one frame will create. This is the one frame will create. Every function one frame will create. For every function, one frame will create. So that is the this stack memory means and heap memory, how the memory will be allocated. And see that, so now when you, when you assign a value for this, this will go and store here. All the this object related, this object related, all the non-static variables and non-static methods will come and store here. For example, now, so you are storing right. So now our new instance member demo will go and store here. will store here. That reference will come pointing here. So in the main method you are calling it. So in that it will store. Where is that? Uh, that is IN, IMDB, right? IMDBOBJ. So this is how it will point. This is how it will point. This will point to So this will point to this object and this object, so this address will store in this local variable. But this is always, this memory is available, but this memory will be cleaned up once all the program execution is over. But this one, entire program, it is available. That's how heap memory and you know, stack memory. Stack memory for local data method calls, that will be there. For heap memory inside, what will be there? The string pools, string pool, and also string pool is another memory. And this is the objects, all the objects, how many objects you create, all objects will store here. So that is the how objects will be stored in the heap 